Hello everybody. Welcome to our watercolor class. I'm Karen Exner and I'm excited about helping you get started on your journey to be a watercolorist. And the first thing that is important in watercolor is your brushes. Uh, I know that you all have, I believe, let's see, you've got, you. everybody has this brush, this shape brush. And this is called a barrel brush or it could be called a round. And this is a very, this is a great brush because you can do a lot with this brush. Another brush that if you ever do want to take up watercoloring, this is a great brush to have, the angle brush. And this is called the bright. Now, I don't know why. <laughs> But it's, I would call it the square brush, square head brush, but it's the bright. Um, this is a detail brush, of course, because it's tiny and it, you can get details. And here's the fan brush. This is a fun brush to do make texture with. You're going to enjoy this if you get it. And I'm going to show you, I'll, I'll use it so that when you do get your own deep fan brush, you can use it. Um, this is a filbert brush. It's got the rounded... Oops, sorry. Fill, fill it brush. It's got the rounded edge to it. It's good for making flowers. Um, this is another um, thing that we can use. You can use your makeup brushes and Q-tips. And you can use a sponge to make texture. And also you should have a paper towel nearby. These are all things that I put on the list that you, you can get from your house to use. And of course, salt, which is really fun. Get a lot of texture with salt. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do, first technique we're gonna try, and I know you're all gonna be wonderful at it, is, um, oh, I wanted to mention something to you. I stop for one second about our techniques. I save these from the grocery store, and I mix colors in them. This is a, it's a, it's just a easy, simple, and then when you mix a color that you like, if it dries up, it's not a problem. All you do is just wet it and you can use it again. Watercolors are so forgiving. So it's kind of, kind of, kind of fun. Okay, next, um, your paper. The paper you have is 140 pound paper and it's, it's a nice size, it's a nice weight paper to watercolor. There's heavier weights, but as the weights get heavier, it, it gets more expensive. So when you, if you're just a beginner, this is a great paper, 140 pound. You can get it on, Am on Amazon. This is another pi picture I gave you, examples of flowers. And I thought this way you could copy them if you'd like to. So it's okay to copy. It gives you good practice when you're making flowers on your own. And then I also gave you a sketch. Here we go. Here's your sketch. It's coming. That I thought would be fun. You could watercolor this yourself if you'd like to, or you could copy it onto better paper with a pencil. So whatever you would like to do with it. But I thought it would be helpful to, as a frame of reference. Okay. And the first thing we're going to do, we're going to try, is finding my round. Where is it? I'm losing it. I lost my round paintbrush. Where is it? Hmm. I don't know what I did with it. It's not in the water, which is a good idea to always put your paintbrushes right back in the water. Okay, I've got another one I can use. Okay, this one, this is, um, now we're gonna do a color wash. This is a color wash I did ahead of time, just to show you what can be done. Okay, so let's. I have, I told you everybody to get bowls from your house. And what I did was I'm making color wash. It's a wash, so of course we're using water. I dipped my brush into one of the paints 
and mixed it into the water. And it takes a while. Just keep doing it until it gets dark enough. <clears throat> Excuse me, because you want it to be dark in the so that the water so it shows up. And then basically all you do is start at the top or wherever you want to start. It doesn't matter. Just depending on the, the painting you're doing. Can you all see that? Yeah, I think you can. Okay, what you're doing is you're just pulling the paint across the top of the page. Okay. And this, this could be a sky. It could be a background for a still life. I normally put my color washes in after I do my entire watercolor. Uh, but you can do it ahead of time. The only thing is you'd have to put color over it. So I don't know if that's something that you want to do because then your colors will kind of be mixed into the into the color wash, which isn't always fun. Okay, so we're just going to pull this over, pull it over. If you notice when you're pulling it over, you're picking up drop drops of the color. Okay, I it's going to be much easier for you because you're you're. Paper's flat. I'm, I'm, I have this up so you can see it easier. Okay. And then, you know, this, I think this is looking like a sky. What do you think? Okay, just pull that over to blend it. It's pretty blended. What do you think? How's, how's your, how is yours going? Is it and this is something that you just practice. Just practice it. It's not, it's no, this is not brain, brain surgery. It's simple. Okay, I'm going to do one more. And see, I'm overlapping the last run I made with my brush. Okay. And I think I'll leave this. It's kind of fun. Okay, then... I'm going to take my paper towel and I think I'm going to make some clouds or make a texture uh, in, in it. So when I'm doing this, I'm taking out color. Can everybody see that? Is that? And that's not really, it's not dark enough for you to see, unfortunately. But you'll notice when you do it, you'll be able to see it. I'll do it a little heavier for you so you can try it again. Okay. Excuse me for doing it quickly. <laughs> I'll add a little more paint to it. There, now you're gonna be able to see clouds. I'm just, and watercolor is a light touch. It's very relaxing. Uh, I, I, it just relaxes me. You never know, you know, what kind of textures you're going to get. This is almost kind of like a sky that's going to start, a storm is going to come in. I think I'll leave that. I kind of like it. Okay, I'm not going to blend it too much. Okay, now take your paper towel and you can make clouds. Okay? Just little dabs. There's the clouds. Pretty simple. And then you can go back in. I'm still using my round brush. You can go back in. I'm, I'm taking a little darker color. And I'm going to put a little shadow underneath the clouds. Okay. So now you can kind of see the shadowing, and I'm just going to pull it a little bit. Almost looks like it's raining, doesn't it? Okay. So, so now you've learned how to color wash. Um, you put in some details, and you learned how to take off 
color with a paper towel. So now you've got some skills that you've already accomplished. You're already an accomplished watercolorist. <laughs> okay, next, next, we're gonna do. is I think we'll do the salt we're gonna start a flower so the, what we're first we're gonna do I'm using my round brush my filbert and I'm going to put in the center of the, the center for our sunflower okay and start the sunflower. So I'm taking my filbert and I'm going to make a circle. I'm going to start out light, I think, with a light color. I always tell my students, start light. You can't all because once you start light, you can darken it, but you can't always lighten it. Even once you put down paint, you can't always pick it up. When I when I say pick it up, this is I'm going to show you what I mean. Let's say I'm putting down a color. Can everybody see that? And then I decide I want it lighter, and so I'm going to pick it up. Okay. You can't always once it's dry it's very hard to pick up. You, you could wet it a little bit and then pick it up. It's not always that easy. So I'm, I'm thinking that this works for me is that I just start light. Whatever I ever do watercolors, I do a very light shades. I don't, I don't dark, I don't put too much paint on my brush. I, I make it pretty light, okay? I think my students that are, have classes with me, they probably get tired of me saying, go light, go light first. Okay, that's kind of dark, but anyway. Okay, so I'm gonna darken that even more for now because we're gonna do something fun. We're gonna make some texture with salt, okay? So I'm tipping, I'm gonna tip this so you can see it. And then I do the salt at the end when I'm doing a flower. So just to remind you, and I think we probably should do a flower just to sh show you the steps. So what I do is I put salt Oops. I'm gonna put salt right into that wet part. And you're gonna, it's gonna be fun. You're gonna see the texture. Okay. <laughs> so we're gonna let that dry because if you don't let it dry, first you let it dry and then you brush it off because it'll get on everything else you wanna do that's around that center. I'll show you. So just a little trick I'm telling you to do that at the end of when you do the flower, that should be one of the last things you do. Okay. And here's my bright again. Okay, so we're going to start our flower again. And as I said, it's going to be very light. With watercolor, to make it lighter, you just put more water in it, add more water. Um, Heavier, at least less water. Okay, so here's my circle. Just start my center for my sunflower. Okay. And let's do our petals. And you could pick any color you want. Um, if you want, you can look up pictures of sunflowers. I just, sunflowers come in so many different colors that it's not a problem. 
You can probably pick any color you want. I've seen yellow, green. I'm trying to think what other colors I've seen. Different shades. Okay, then I'm going to put... I'm going to add... Our petals. If you took my sketch class, you know that I kind of like to put in the petals north, north, south, east, west to start out with. Now, I'm. If you notice, I'm not scrubbing the page. People tend to like when they paint, and this is what we learn, like in kindergarten or in, in um, lower grades. You know, they go like. They, they just like, they kind of dab at it, which is okay if you're doing a certain texture or a certain way, but your watercolors will be much prettier if you just move the color around the painting. Okay. I know it doesn't look like much now, but it will after we're done. So I'm basically putting color down and then I'm moving it with my brush, the water, because it's water colors. Okay. And I'm not going real dark yet. Okay. Is everybody following along? I'm just kind of scumbling it. fun. Just a very light touch. You don't have to scrub the paper right now. Just kind of let the, the water flow right over the paper. The paper will absorb the water. Okay. Now, I'm going to let this dry because we're gonna go back in and we're gonna put in more details. Okay, and let's see what we've got here. Let's see, we could start working with this one. Go back to our, um, now I'm wiping off as much salt as I can get off because I don't want the salt effect on my petals. Okay, so. Um, now we can go in and put the petals in. I should, probably should have left it. This kind of looks like mountains, doesn't it? And it could have been the sun. <laughs> okay. I'm going to go pretty quick. I'm trying to. And I'm avoiding that salt. I don't want to get it on my petals. I don't really want it on my petals. And it's kind of fun because you can see, you. I know you can see on yours the texture better with the salt. Okay. And I'm my mine's running, but yours won't. If it's on flat, it won't work. If it's on... The flat, if it's down flat, it won't run. Okay, so I'm going to let that dry. And now, this dries really fast. So let's put some details in now. And we've got, we're going to start layering. Oh, there's one thing that's kind of fun. Um, let's think, I think we should do wet into wet right now, maybe. Because it's, it's kind of fun to do that. Okay, wet into wet is making your painting wet. So let's take your brush. And let's see, what color should we drop in here? We're going to drop. Okay. And you make it a very wet area. Can you see that? 
Then you take another color, sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna take red. Take another color and you drop it in. See how it moves around? Sorry. Okay. This actually, when you do this on a big piece of paper, like I've seen where they've taken to do wet into wet, they've dumped a whole piece of paper in water. This would be really fun to do with your grandchildren or children. And you dip it in water. I'm going to try to do put just a bunch of water on here right now. Let's do, uh, let's see what would be a fun color to try, wet into wet. Uh, pink. So you make it nice and wet. Keep adding water and paint. This actually could be the start of my poppy. Yeah, let's pretend like it's the start of it. So I, I put, I use the pink underneath. Okay, now the fun part. You just take another darker color and drop it in. And I'm going to move it around. Move your picture, move your up and down. Okay. And I'm going to leave it now. I kind of like that because I'm going to let that dry and I'm going to go back in and detail it. Does everybody see what I'm doing? Kind of spreading it around more. Good. And I think I'm going to make it use my paper towel. You can take the paper towel and kind of make some lights. I'm going to blot it a little bit. Okay. Doesn't look like much now, I know. make some details with my little detail brush. Sometimes when you do wet into wet you see shapes and it's kind of fun to like make a painting right from those shapes. I've seen people do that. It's kind of a technique that people use. So here's my poppy and I'm, this is a drier brush that's another form of watercolor is dry brush. It's not, it's called dry brush because there's not a lot of water on it. Okay, it's called dry brushing. This is detailing. There. Kind of a kakai poppy, but I get the idea. And I'm going to add orange to it. I found making poppies, if I use orange and red, it makes them look, it gives them more depth using different colors. Doesn't look like much yet. Actually, it kind of looks like a rose. <laughs> And I'm using a dry brush right now. You can hear the brush on the paper that it's dry. It's not, it doesn't have a lot of water on it. And that's dry brushing. Okay. 
And the thing that really makes it look like a poppy, this is kind of an abstract poppy, is the purple in the middle. So get your purple or any dark color will do. Okay. And I'm just going to do poke dots on it in a circle. Okay. Does that make sense to you? I'm going to use my flat brush, which is really, it's called bright brush. And I'm going to add some more orange to it. Take some out and color out. So I'm wetting my paper. I'm wetting my paper towel. Yeah, it worked. Okay. So you get the idea. I, I'd have to play with this pretty a little longer in order to. Okay. Let's see what we've talked about. Um, we've talked about salt, using salt as texture. We've talked about color washing. We've talked about taking color off with the paper towel. So here was this, if you it, if you could see this, let me put this closer to you. You can see the texture from the salt in this one. It's all dried. Let's see what else we have. Um, layering. Let's talk about layering and mixing colors. That's probably a good thing to talk about. Okay. Um, get your plate or whatever you're using to mix colors with. You can use a styrofoam plate or like an egg carton plate. And a really lovely green. Is blue. It's just kind of dirty, but it's okay. And yellow ochre. I love this green. You see it? It's a great green. And you can add a little green to it, too. There. How's that? There. I'm going to put a little brown in it. You, that's fun to just take your paints and just play with them, mixing colors to get different looks. They, they have in, there's like watercolor classes that it's all about just mixing color. That's all they do. Okay, so let's make a, shall we make a leaf? With our, with our green that we made up. Our, our... Okay, I just pulled a line down. And here's my leaf. I'm going to do an outline first. And then I'm going to fill it in. I'm gonna, I like to pull the outline towards the center. Can you see that? I don't know why, but it's kind of fun. And I'm, I'm gonna leave some lights open. Okay. 
because I don't like it always to have so many lines in it. So. <laughs> I'm going to take my sponge and see if I can't make um, some texture with those leaves. Yes, I can. Kind of fun. Okay. And let's see what else we can do. a little put a little dark color underneath it pull it out a little and you could fill in your uh, sunflower And we're detailing now. And then, now I'm gonna layer the petals to start doing some layering. And you're gonna, you're gonna be able to see, I'm making the, the, putting a lot of water in the paint. So you can see some of the yellow coming through. Okay, it's starting to look like something. Now let's put some shadowing in. Now we're using a dry brush to do this part of it. I'm just trying to give you skills. And here's the dry brush. In. And I don't outline sometimes all the way. Your eye will make it look like a petal. You don't have to outline all the way. And then if we want to put some veins in it, let's take our handy dandy brush, fan brush. And you have to, to do the fan brush, it, probably, it works best to be in paint that's kind of, uh, it's a real wet. It's kind of dry. Let's see if this is going to work. <laughs> what do you think? Not, not, not great. It should, be going, it should go this way, but my brush is too big. And I'm going to show you what this brush can do before we think we're done. I think you've gotten all the little, the little tricks. Yep, 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 yep. Um, okay, yeah. Let's let's. I'll do a little more of this. I don't want to keep you too too long today. That fun. And then you can go this way. So much you can do with this brush. And you can go I like the swiggles. The squiggles. Get our Q-tip. Take some out. Kind of soften it. Soften the look of it. Okay. I think we're done. I think you've got your color wash. You learned about wet into wet. You learned about layering. 
Um, we've learned how to pick up color with paper towel. When also one more tip, and you've learned about dry brushing, using a dry brush rather than a very wet brush. Another tip is when you want to um, add color, when you, when you want to add color, we did that, we already did that, that's right. I'm trying to think what else we, we've, I think we're good. I think we've got it all figured out. Okay, so just kind of run through, go through the tape again and find out all the different techniques you can use and experiment and just have fun and enjoy yourselves. And thank you so much for joining me today. Take care. Bye.